our plan is. Good morning. Welcome to worship. On behalf of, on behalf of Pastor Tammy and the entire worship team, we are happy you joined us today. This Thursday, Margaret Mayette's Haygood and the administrative assistant will retire after 24 years of service. She has greeted you on the phone, at the door, she has printed bulletins, mailed you letters and newsletters, and spoken on behalf of you at staff meetings. She has served Haygood faithfully and with excellence. Because of COVID, we cannot at this time celebrate her retirement in person, but you're invited to give her a call this week or send a card to thank her for her ministry. We hope to share more with you regarding her last day next Sunday. The Healthy Church team continues to meet weekly to discuss the conditions within our community. We still plan to return to in-person worship on February 7th. Please be reminded of the 2021, or, yeah, 2021 District Training Day. This training consists of six workshops that will be held virtually on Zoom on February 6th. A link for registration and additional information can be found on the Elizabeth District UMC website and also on Haygood's homepage. Frederick Buchner writes, when you come right down to it, what is God up to? For God's sweet sake, sending them all out, prophets, apostles, evangelists, teachers, and the whole tattered bunch. God was making a body for Christ. Christ didn't have a regular body, anyone so God was making any more so God was making one out of anybody God could find who looked as if they might just possibly do God was using other people's hands and feet to be Christ's hands and feet and when there were some place where Christ was needed in a hurry and needed bad God put a finger on the church and its members to go and be Christ in that place let us worship the Lord Please join me in the call to worship. The Spirit of God is upon us. We are called to be God's people. The Spirit of God is upon us. We are called to be the body of Christ. Come, let us worship God, who binds us together in love and service. Please join us in our opening hymn. Spirit of the living God, we praise and adore you for our membership in the body of Christ, a gift received through the fullness of your grace. Empower us anew, we pray, with the tongues of fire and hearts of love to proclaim the reconciling word among all people. May we, as the body of Christ in this place, be the best evidence of your love by declaring and witnessing to it here at the crossroads. We give thanks to all of us for Christ's body and rejoice in the one being a part of it today. In thy name we pray. Amen. Now we welcome Miss Lori for the children's message. Good morning. Happy Sunday. I hope everyone's having a great week. So I want you guys to think back before COVID, okay? So back last March, February, January, and I want you to think about how on a Sunday morning, you're getting ready for church. 
Who are you excited to see? Are you thinking of that person? Maybe it's your Sunday school teacher. Maybe it's um, the greeter at the door. Maybe it's one of the people that are leading the service. Maybe it's your friend from Bible study, or even someone you've grown up in the church with. Who are you excited to see? There's probably a lot of people that we're excited to see. That's because these people actually help shape our faith journey. They help shape the faith that we have in God through their actions. In our scripture today, we hear that we all make up the body of Christ. We're given different gifts to make up the body of Christ and be the hands and feet of Jesus and show his love to the world. We're even going to hear from someone who attended Haygood and his faith was shaped through Haygood as well. So I want you guys to think this week about who are you excited to see? Who has helped your faith grow? Whether it's that friend that invited you to church, your Sunday school teacher, or even your pastor here. Who has helped your faith grow and who's influenced your faith journey? And how can you do the same to influence someone else? Remember, showing Jesus' love to others through kindness and helping is a great way to help other people um, grow in their faith to God. Another great way is through prayer. Will you go ahead and turn to God in prayer with me now? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and let's pray together. Dear God, Thank you so much, Thank you so much. For, your son Jesus for your son Jesus and for the people, and for the people that have helped shape, that have helped shape our, faith. our faith. Help us, Help us to, show love to show love and kindness and, kindness and, to, be and to be the hands and feet, the hands and feet of, Jesus of Jesus so others May grow, may grow to know you. To know you. In, Jesus name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're now at the time in the service where we present our tithes and offerings. As a reminder, offerings can be given online using the Give link at the top of Haygood's webpage. You may also drop by your offering at the church or mail it into the church. Pray with me. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you can always be trusted. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it as your, in your kingdom and for your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask this all in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
you are here with us this morning and um, this morning I wanted to introduce to you our preacher. He's very familiar to many of you and some of you he might be new. He is the son of Ruth Page and he is a pastor at Hay Herndon United Methodist Church. He grew up here at Haygood in the latter part of his life and we are grateful for him coming to us to share with us God's Word. He's one of the first persons who welcomed me to my appointment here at Haygood, and I'm grateful to introduce to you Jonathan Page. Hey there. I want to say hello to all my friends at Haygood United Methodist Church in Virginia Beach. My name is Jonathan Page. Uh, I am one of the pastors at Herndon United Methodist Church all the way up in Northern Virginia, uh, but I am coming to you today to share a message with you at the invitation of your pastor, Tammy Eastep. Tammy has been such an incredible mentor and friend for me, and I know y'all love her a lot. And uh, what Tammy has asked is that today uh, I share a message with you about my call story. So what you should know about me is I grew up at Haygood. Some of you will recognize me, some of you won't. I had more hair back then, uh, maybe less chins, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but it is good to be back with you, even in a virtual way. Some of you might know uh, my mom, Ruth Page, uh, who's active in the life of the church there. And uh, it's just really a joy to be able to join you for a few minutes, to be able to reflect on God's word together and to share some encouragement with you about my story and how that might intersect with your story. So I'm going to share a scripture with you today from the letter called 1 Corinthians, Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. Uh, we're going to read the 12th chapter, the 27th through the 31st verses. So here's what God's word says in 1 Corinthians. You are the body of Christ and parts of each other. In the church, God has appointed first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, the ability to help others, leadership skills, different kinds of tongues. All aren't apostles, are they? All aren't prophets, are they? All aren't teachers, are they? All don't perform miracles, do they? All don't have gifts of healing, do they? All don't speak in different tongues, do they? All don't interpret, do they? But you, use your ambition to try to get the greater gifts. And I'm going to show you an even better way. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? God, we are here. And we believe that you're here too. And so, God, we're praying for these moments ahead that as we reflect on your word and on our lives, God, would you be speaking to us? Might we be listening for you? And God, would you be making us more and more like you with every breath we take? We love you, God. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. So if you ever find yourself wanting to have a really raucous time, and once a year, you should come to a, a gathering of United Methodists. It happens either in Hampton, not too far from where you are, or in Roanoke on the other side of the state, and a group of Methodists get, get together for this thing called Annual Conference. And boy, is it a rip-roaring fun time. Okay, I can't lie in church. Let me be real. It's 
sometimes a little bit boring, sometimes a little contentious, but, but the highlight every year for me of the annual conference for the people called Methodists in Virginia is this service where people are ordained. Back in 2014, I got to experience the gift of being ordained, and, and one of the things they ask folks who are being ordained to do is to select a verse from the Bible to be displayed on a screen while the words of ordination are being spoken over you. So if you have checked out the Bible before, you know like there are a few options there, uh, thousands of options. And so uh, selecting that ordination verse sometimes is a little bit challenging. Sometimes folks take a very serious take, others take a, an ironic take. People have all sorts of interpretations of Scripture as it relates to ordination, just like people have all sorts of images of what Scripture is meant to be in all of our lives. For me, my ordination verse was, was pretty clear from the outset, and it's one of the verses we just read. It's 1 Corinthians 12, 31. It says, use your ambition to try and get the greater gifts, but I am going to show you an even better way. You see, it comes at the end of this passage where Paul's talking about how all sorts of people have different gift sets, different ways that they are equipped and enabled to be the body of Christ. And at the end of that, he wants to encourage and say, hey, know your giftedness, know where you are, know who you are, but continue to pursue excellence as I show you, as we together discover God's better way for our lives. Can I tell you that I selected this in large part because of my experience at Haygood United Methodist Church. My family came to Haygood in 1992. Uh, We had lived in Virginia Beach. We moved to a different neighborhood in Virginia Beach, and we decided it was time for a new church. And I'm saying we, it was my parents. I was like seven. I didn't know what I was doing. So we came to Haygood. The pastor at the time was a guy named Alan Reif Snyder. And And I would say that a lot of my experience growing up in Haygood Church really formed and shaped me and helped me to understand my calling to ordain ministry. There are really three aspects to that that I want to share with you today that I think matter to all of us, whether or not ordain ministry is something you're considering. I think we're all ministers of the gospel of Jesus by virtue of our baptism. I want to tell you about these three things that were really important in how Haygood influenced me. The first is that Haygood was a place that consistently showed up for young people. From the time I was a a young boy in that church, I had Sunday school teachers that poured into my life. I remember people like Mike Galland and Pat Oxley. The pastor at the time, Alan Reifsnyder, his wife, Libby Reifsnyder, taught three years of middle school Sunday school. I don't know if we get like crowns in heaven or anything like that, but if we do, Libby earned like 20 stars on her crown from doing that. The reality is, week after week, these were adults who could have chosen better things to do. They could have had, you know, parties, they could have been watching football at home, but week after week, moment after moment, these were people who showed up and consistently poured into the life of young people. Beyond those Sunday school years, uh, I was involved in, our, in the church's youth ministry. And, and again, volunteers who just gave of their time and their energy and their passion to let young people know that they mattered. Can I tell you that what you have going right now at Haygood with children's ministry and with youth ministry, as young as preschool all the way to high school and college students, this is one of the most important things that you can be about in the life of the church is pouring in to young people. What we know is that that younger generations are becoming increasingly distant from the church. And a lot of times it's because the church seems irrelevant. Faith seems like it doesn't hold the same kind of weight. It may not feel like the same kind of thing that it was maybe when we were younger. But what makes faith relevant, I have found in my life, both through my experience growing up in the church and as a pastor now for a number of years, is that oftentimes young people respond simply to the act of showing up. My hope and my prayer for you is that you might be able to think about where you could show up for somebody who is younger than you in the life of your church. And if you're a young person, look out for those people. Sometimes older people seem boring. They might seem like bald and weird and all this sort of thing. Those people care about you. 
and they love you, and they will count in your life in a big way. The second thing that Hagid did for me was, was to grant unmerited opportunity. I think about what Hagid did for me, and I, I think back to the story of the call of Saul. We read about this in 1 Samuel chapter 9, and, and there's this story, this scene that's really incredible, where Saul goes on this hunt for a donkey, and he brings somebody along with him, and it's on this hunt that Samuel is, is looking out for uh, this person that God has called him as a prophet to, to speak into life and to, to say, hey, you're going to be a leader in and around this area. And, and it's this, this really fascinating thing that happens where, where it's like this intersection of an unexpected moment where some, somebody is doing something that, that feels very mundane and very unimportant alongside feeling like, well, maybe they aren't going to matter much. Maybe they, they aren't that big of a deal. And, and God intersects and intercedes in that moment and say, hey, this is going to matter a lot. You are going to be a king. You see, there wasn't anything that Saul did in that story to, to earn that opportunity, but God opened the door anyway. So much of the story of Hagad for me is, is that it's a place where I was given opportunities to lead and to, to speak and to, to do things in the life of the church that I had no business doing. In between my sophomore and junior years of high school, we, we had this leadership transition in youth ministry. There was a beloved youth pastor named Adam Bradshaw who had been at the church for a long time, and he moved to a different church in Virginia Beach. And so we had this gap where there was like a year where there was no youth pastor in the church. And that could have been an opportunity for, for the church to say, well, let's, let's have some parents come in and they're going to teach lessons and lead ski trips and stuff like that. But instead, do you know what the church did? The church said to youth leaders, literally students that were involved in the student ministry at the time, hey, you guys take the lead. You run the youth group times. You, you plan out all the things that you're going to do. And so there was a team of five or six of us that, that helped to lead that and coordinate that and do that. And you know what happened, friends? At that time, I knew I, I had a calling to ministry that reinforced and gave me skills and opportunities that, that I had no business having. Later, when I was in seminary at Duke Divinity School down in North Carolina, I remember I was in my first semester there, and, and I got a call from Chuck Shoemate, who was the pastor at the time, and he said, Jonathan, I'd like you to come and preach on Christmas Eve. Can I tell you, like, now that I'm a pastor of a church that's about the same size as Hey Goods, like, I don't think I'm calling up a seminarian to say, hey, would you, would you preach the Christmas Eve services? That's like a, it's a big deal. It's like the Super Bowl of the church. And, and rather than like holding that in or, or keeping that in some way, Chuck said, hey, let's give it away. Let's give somebody a shot who's a little bit different. You see, so often when we don't put constraints on people, when we don't say, well, well this person's capable of this, that person's capable of that, and that's it. We open the door for opportunity. It's amazing how God can move in and through people's lives. I think it's so important for the church to, to show up consistently for young people and to grant unmerited opportunity. But, but can I tell you the third thing and the biggest thing that Haygood's done for me in my life? The biggest thing is that Haygood has taught me the importance of developing spirit-filled relationships. Throughout my childhood and my teenage years, and even after college when I was living in Virginia Beach, working at a different church for a while, so many of the relationships that I formed at Haygood are, are lifelong friendships that continue to shape and mold me even to this day. I think about people that you see most weeks in your worship services like Austin Grau and Kyle Smith and Randy Carlson, who, who I've known for decades now, who are good friends of mine, people who I cherish and love. I think about so many of the people I, I grew up with who were a part of that youth ministry season, those, those people who we stay in touch with and, and continue to be shaped and formed by. I think about so many of the adults in that church who, well, we're all adults now, but, you know, people who, who were a little bit older than me, who poured into me and cared for me. I think about like Don Jackson. I think about Bill Edwards. I think about some of those saints of the church, the LaRock family, and, and just so many of those people who, who walked alongside and cared for me. The clergy of the church, all the way back to Alan Rife Snyder, people like Mike Nobles and Doug Geating and Chuck Shoemate, and of course, Pastor Tammy. I think about Don Trailer. I think about those who have gone on before us. 
who have meant so much and, and those relationships that, that have just meant everything to me. And maybe one of the most important relationships that Hague had helped me to, to know more about is the relationship that I have with my parents, my mom and my dad. My dad's funeral was at Hagid, uh, gosh, it's been 12 years uh, in just a couple of months, and I'll never forget the number of people who, who showed up and who cared deeply for my mom and I at his passing. And I think about my mom, Ruth, who, who is a, a saint at Hagid, who I talk to every week, and almost always our conversation is about church and about life, and, and it's just that, that the community at Hagid has, has become interwoven and how we understand family and life. You see, my hope and my prayer for you is that, that you can understand that as being a part of Hagar, you're a part of the body of Christ. And as Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians, your part may be different. Who knows? You may be an arm or you may be an armpit. You may be an elbow, a hinge point. You may be a thinker, a head. You, you know, there are all sorts of parts that we could go on and on about. But my encouragement and my hope for you is that you will show up and play your part. Because the life that you may touch may look like mine. You may be inspiring somebody like me or Melissa Porter Miller or Ryan LaRock to live a life of ordained ministry. Or you may be inspiring a, a young person in the Virginia Beach community who doesn't have hope somewhere else to have hope and have life. You may be granting unmerited opportunity to someone else, or even to you. And you may be pouring into relationships that are spirit-filled that will linger throughout someone's life. My question for you, my friends, is maybe what of those ideas do you need to embrace? Where might God be calling you to, to show up for younger people to, to grant unmerited opportunity or to develop spirit-filled relationships? And how might God be calling you, no matter what it looks like. You matter. Your story matters. It matters because God is a part of it. God is leading it. And God's love has the capacity to change you and me and to bring us into the fullness of what life can be. Thank you so much, Hey Good United Methodist Church, for touching my life. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be a part of this worship gathering today. May God continue to bless you, and may God continue to open the doors for us to know who we are called to be, how we are called to live, and in what ways we can reflect God's love in all that we say and do. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for sharing with us your call that came through the people of Hey Good United Methodist Church. Hey Good, y'all did a good job with him. He is one of the leaders of our conference. He's heading up our common table for the conference as well as a delegate to the next general conference. Um, Jonathan has blessed the life of people in this church and um, throughout our conference and for your love of him that um, created him into the pastor he is. Thank you so much. We will continue in this series of hearing about people who've been called into ministry of the life of the church. Um, next weekend, um, we will hear from Ryan LaRock, so I invite you to join us uh, again. Let us pray together. O most gracious and holy God, for your call upon our lives that comes to us through a prayer, through a spoken word, through baptismal waters and through your very spirit, we give you thanks. And we remember that your call doesn't just come to those people called clergy, but your call comes to every person in this world who's created in your image and called to live as your people in this world. Together, O oh God, may we work to build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven in partnership with you. May we be a sign of your presence at this crossroad, and may we be a beacon of God's light that echoes your call on other people's lives. O oh Lord, on this day, we lift up to you Don Solomon and Patty Liebler, both who have been in the hospital this week. We pray for your healing power and grace to be with them and their families. 
We lift up Larry Collier and Claire Richardson, who are both in hospice, and pray for your healing power and grace to be with them and their families. We can pray for your continued healing for Donna and Winston, for um, Janie and Arlene, both who have, um, Janie and Arlene who have COVID. We pray for Kathy Eberlene, who is um, a preschool child's grandmother who is on a ventilator. We give thanks for your healing power with Siobhan and um, for the fact that she is home from the hospital and improving and continued prayers for her healing. And prayers to surround her mother, Melissa, who is also a pastor of a church, also um, a mother, and also someone trying to live out the gospel. And we pray for her healing and power and grace as well. Prayers for a student whose grandmother passed away from COVID and another grandmother is in ICU with COVID. Prayers for the Riondu family. Prayers for Fern Gallon. Prayers for all those with COVID those who are recovering, those who have been vaccinated, those who are working on the front line, and all those who have lost loved ones to this um, pandemic. We pray for your continued healing with Christine, prayers for the family of Preston Daniels, and prayers for the family of Richard Delaney. Oh, holy God, we pray for our country. We pray for a new administration we pray for healing. We pray that you would make us one nation under God indivisible. We pray for the leaders all around this world that they would work together for your people, for your kingdom, for your reign and your peace. A oh, holy God, we pray for your church. It's been a difficult time to be in ministry in a pandemic that separates us one from the other. But we give you thanks for those who continue to work in our food bank and in our children's clothes closet and in our preschool and in many other ways of reaching out and being in mission to our community. We pray that you would make us stronger as we continue to work for the good of all in our community. May we be a witness and continue to shape lives into faith, into love, into grace, and into ministry. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I have a special benediction for you, but I left my paper. Hold on. So now receive this blessing. You have been called and anointed. You have been strengthened and enlightened. You have become one body in Christ. So now go to spread joy and liberation in word and in deed to all the world. Go in the name of God, our creator, Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer. Amen.